As was said, my name is Laura Harvey, and I am an educator here in Douglas County. I am a child development specialist at Melrose Elementary. I have taught for 22 years, and I have five children. So I'm quite invested in the children of our community for a whole lot of reasons. And as we started thinking about this library problem, which is a problem, I am really an advocate. And I often feel like the character in this book, The Lorax, who has so many issues with so many things, and people stand on so many sides of that issue. But he has a line in that story where he says, I am the Lorax, and I speak for the trees. Mm -hmm. And I am here today as Laura Harvey, and I speak for the children. They do not have a vote. They depend on you and me to make sure that their future is strong. And when we sit in board meetings and when we sit in city council meetings and we balance budgets and we do those things that are so, so important, sometimes we make the mistake of saying that we live in a healthy community because our budget is balanced or that we live in a healthy community because we passed this initiative or that initiative. But I think we need to think very clearly about what we are leaving for these children when we make choices like closing a library. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about advocacy and some of the things that I hope we know that the library provides as a university and provides um, for our children as champions, champion our children. As we've sat in some of these other library meetings, we've looked at all the things the library does and there are so many. And I'm so, so grateful to all of you for the time that you're putting into this and the willingness that you're putting to solve a really, really complex problem. And I understand that complexity is not understood by many, and people have a really strong opinion on one way or the other about the issues that you're looking at. And I want you to know how much I appreciate the hard work that you put into that of your own time. And that our children are lucky that you're willing to do that but I wanted to bring them to the forefront so we don't get to hear from them. So we're gonna talk about a couple of different things. First, you should know that my children are in a big range, 25, 19, 17, 13, and eight. So we've done the library in lots of ways for lots of years, and I've appreciated this library that opened when my oldest was not, you know, just opened and she came as a baby. So we have loved this library and we're grateful to this community for providing the services that it does. The children really, really are our greatest capital as we look at this county and we look at what we have. And there's a wonderful, wonderful quote from Confucius where he says, if we want to plan for a year, we should plant rice. And if we want to plan for 10 years, we should plant trees. But if we want to plan for 100 years, we should educate our children. And I think we need to really be thinking about that. I think we really need to think about the pioneers who came to this valley. So these children of mine, two of my five are here tonight, they have great-great-grandparents who came to Douglas County before it was a county. And when they came to this county, there were no homes, there were no schools, there were no libraries. And they made great sacrifices as a people to give us what we have. And I think when we look at stepping back and abandoning what has been given to us, that we need to think about how we can communicate with our public. And I think that that's been a challenge. I think it's been a challenge to communicate with the constituents and to make sure that they understand what's really happening and why. And complex things like compression and things that we don't talk about and people don't understand. And I understand that that's tricky. But I think the real issue and the most important thing we can do is remember that we are pioneers in our own time. And that in 100 years, people will look back at what we've done and what we left. And the legacy which you are working on right now is a true legacy that you're giving to those children. So I want to thank you for that. So I first want to talk about the premise of a shared collection and the trick that that is. And I know that that really, really is a trick that you're dealing with, this collection. And what do we do and how do we look at the many different branches and that collection and what do we do? So we know that Benjamin Franklin was one of the first to come up with that collection idea. We also know that at 10 years of age, he was asked to drop out of school by his father. And we know that he spent two hours a day reading books, and he ran out of those books. And so he came up with this idea that if we all put a little bit in together, then we'd all have a whole lot more than we had before. And we sometimes forget, and we think that, that this is a different time, or that we're speaking in a different age. And I think it's important that we remember that 35% of the children in Douglas County live below the poverty line. So when we're talking about 
they can have access through digital technology, they don't all have access through digital technology. They can gather that by Googling it. They cannot gather that by Googling it. They do not have that technology. But not only do they not have that technology, they do not have books. One of the teachers in my building checked with her class today, and a third of the children in her class do not have books. So when we start talking about losing access to that collection, that is a significant problem. Even when we think about the fact that the schools do have collections. But when the kids don't have access to those collections in the summer, it's a huge problem. So one of the things that I studied for you all is I was trying to think, why do we value the libraries and why should we fight and what does it really matter? Some very, very interesting research that has come out of several universities, Philadelphia and a couple different ones, where they checked out the summer reading programs. And I hope that Carol will call you correct me, but the Oregonian quoted us as having 12,600 children participating in our youth programs in 2016. Those children are closing that book gap, right? So my children are going to have books whether we have a library or not. And we're going to talk about the benefit to them of the library, but they will have books, but there are a lot of children in Douglas County that will not have access to books. So this study that was so fascinating took these kids and they made four groups of them. And then two of the groups they put in summer reading programs, and two of them they sent to summer camp. Sounds like an awesome opportunity for all. But what they found, which was shocking, was that the children that went to the summer reading program improved their reading by participating in the library summer reading program. Nothing special about it. The typical library reading program that's been run for decades. That program, not only did the children not fall in their reading, because we look at that summer slump so often as teachers to make sure that, that they're not just slumping. Those kids didn't slump, they improved over the summer. I know twins in Douglas County that when they left second grade decided they were gonna read the entire Harry Potter series. <laughs> when they came back, let me tell you, they had improved in their reading, we had to recreate it's part of the reason that I've had the opportunity to work with the talented and gifted students in our district because of opportunities like that. But that took place over a summer out of library reading, not, not, in, the, not in the classroom. Public libraries provide information and educational opportunities free for all people. So when we think about what we're looking at in the, with these poverty rates, we know that bookstores, we don't have very many. And if we look at the ones that we do have, some of the best books we get in Roseburg, we get out of Costco, right? But you have to have a membership. So we have these real problems for our kids to actually access the libraries, uh, the benefits. I wanna talk a little bit about our librarians. Our librarians are highly educated individuals that are specifically trained to do the work they do. Librarians make suggestions, they broaden children's taste, and they expand their minds. They're specialized in early childhood education, in intermediate education, and in working with teens. We have incredible volunteers that volunteer in our hospitals and in our schools, but we would never expect them to run our schools or to run our hospitals. And I think that when we look at having a complete volunteer base for our libraries, we are missing the boat and being short-sighted in appreciating the work that it takes to navigate our collections, to understand exactly what was said about these collections not being navigated correctly. And we have been very lucky that we have strong librarians who have done an excellent work with our collections and we have a strong collection and we have knowledgeable people who work with our children every time they walk into this library, and they offer them tremendous services, and we're really, really, really fortunate to have that. <coughs> it wasn't an accident that our nation's founding fathers established the first American Lending Library. They understood the importance of that shared collection. They understood the free democratization of education. They understand the un unbiased research and the uncensored enlightenment. I want to take my last couple minutes to talk with you about what our children find in the library that is so different than anything else. So this epiphany came to me when we first thought that the library was going to be closing. 
When you click on Amazon and you buy your books, it recommends to you books like the books you read. But when you walk into a library, there's this casual experience where you see the collection and you pick out books through serendipity. And as our children walk through the libraries and see those things, they find interests and passions that we have never thought of. They become something we never dreamed of. And they take the opportunity to be the human capital that we need. When we take that opportunity away from them, even with the reading room, which I'm thrilled that we're keeping that model at least as an opportunity, but they take home books and they look at gems and they look at the human body and they look at so many things and a whole lot of them they're not interested in the end. They bring them back the next week and they get something else. But they do find passions and they do become people. These children that we love are really just children for that long. But they will go forth and do great things for Douglas County and beyond. But if we're looking at real people, there's one person that I have to think about tonight. So I grew up in a family of readers. My dad read a novel every night. He was the mayor of our small town. He did so many wonderful things and he taught me to be a civic advocate. He taught me that not only was it my right to vote, but it was my responsibility. But my dad didn't learn to read until he was in sixth grade. He had a teacher who put in the work who had the patience and the determination to make sure that he learned to read. My dad grew up in a family that was patriotic and his parents had served in the military. They made great sacrifices for our country, but he was not literate. When he learned to read, he went into his library, his tiny little town, and he started reading the books on the shelves one at a time. He read every book in that library. He was the first person in his family to graduate from college. All of his children have attended college. He has grandchildren attending college now. He passed away. I have a busy life. I have advocacy in many areas. But I could not let our library close, knowing that 35% of our children sit where he sits. And it's not my children, and probably isn't your children. But they are our children, and they do not have a voice. So it is my hope that you will understand the serious nature of what we're looking at. That this university we call a library helps all of us, but especially our children. When we look at those numbers and the number of children that have come through the doors of this library, in the last year, it's mind-boggling, really. When you think about the tiny babies who are carrying books on their mother's laps, and the teenagers that are coming here after school, some of them homeless, that their lives really are changed. And that it's worth the work that we do. And it's worth the effort that you're making. And that the educators at Douglas County believe in these children. And we want to stand shoulder to shoulder with you. And when those great great grandfathers came in 1906, they didn't know what they would find in Douglas County, but they've left us a wonderful legacy in so many ways. And I know that when these children's children look back, they will be grateful that we were not short-sighted, but that we had a vision, a vision for their future and for their opportunities. And we would like to ask you as educators to include us in the discussion, because 10 a.m. on Fridays, we're busy. 10 a.m. on Fridays, we have our own little thing going on. 30 or 32 of them, or however many there are. But they need you to keep doing your work, and we want to help you. So please let us know what we can do to help. Please let us help you advertise. I think one of the hardest things in this whole thing with the election and the task force is getting that information disseminated. And I know that some of these young people, I'm amazed at the youngest <coughs> teachers coming in. They got it. They can help us, and they can help disseminate information, and they want to help you do that and they want to be shoulder to shoulder with you, and they want these children to have the opportunity of a library. So I just want to thank you and let you know how much I appreciate you, but also know that the passion that I feel that we can't allow this on our watch is true and real.